Hello YouTube. I, I want to share with you more about interesting artifacts from ancient Mesopotamia. Shumir was an ancient civilization in southern Mesopotamia. It's modern Iraq. During the so-called Chalcolithic and Early Bronze Ages, and that's science, scientific designation. Although the historical records in the region do not go back much further than 2900 BC, again, according to scientists, modern historians believe that Shumir was first settled between 4500 and 4000 BC by people who may or may not have spoken the Shumerian language. These people, now called the Ubaidians, were the first to drain the marshes for agriculture, develop trade, and establish industries, including weaving, leather work, metal work, masonry, and pottery. And I'll add for myself, an incredible advanced civilization appeared from nowhere, so as to say from nowhere, and flourished. But not only in Shumer at the time, also ancient China, also, of course, uh, the um, Menon Kingdom, Egypt, and so forth, and, of course, the Americas. But that's for another time. The Shumerian city of Eridu, which at that time bordered the Persian Gulf, is believed to be the world's first city. Here, three separate cultures fused. The so-called peasant Ubaidenian farmers, the nomadic Semitic-speaking uh, farmers who raised livestock, and people who fished. The surplus of storable food created by this economy allowed the region's population to settle in one place instead of migrating as hunter-gatherers. It also allowed for a much greater population density, which required an extensive labor force and division of labor with many specialized arts and crafts. And also those hunter-gatherers and peasants and so forth were building incredible architectural structures. There is a statue, statue, figurine, call it what you want, which is kept in German Museum Pergamon, which is located in Berlin. It was found during excavations by German archaeologists in the ancient city of Uruk, which is located on the territory of modern Iraq. Uruk is an ancient city-state of the Sumerians, which existed back in the 3rd millennium BC. Many archaeological finds, amazing ones, have been discovered there. Many of them are little known. For example, this sculpture. Perhaps there is very little information about it because the scientists cannot explain. Why is this statue inside a sphere? This sphere or ball is very similar to ancient Vimanas, Im images of which can be seen in many other ancient sources. We should add that many other mysterious evidence of the past have been found in the territory of Iraq, and we don't know about all the finds and all the discoveries, of course. Pergamon Museum features exhibits about the ancient cultures of Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece, and Rome. What else could you ask for? This is very interesting. All of those cultures, and they have their own secrets. But let's look at Uruk. Uruk was also known as Warka or Warka. It was an ancient city of Shumer and later of Babylonia, situated east of the present bed of the Euphrates River and the dried up ancient channel of the Euphrates, 30 kilometers east of modern Samawa, Alt Mudhana, Iraq. Uruk is the type site for the <clears throat> for the period. Uruk played a leading role in the early urbanization of Shumer in the mid 4th millennium BC. By the final phase of the Uruk period, about 3100 BC, the city may have, might have had 40,000 residents, with 80 to 90,000 people living in its environs, making it the largest urban area in the world at the time. Imagine this. The legendary King Gilgamesh, according to the chronology presented in the Sumerian King List, ruled Uruk in the 27th century BC. The city lost its prime importance about 2000 BC. In the context of the struggle of Babylonia against Elam, a very interesting place by the way, when one day I'll speak about it more. 
but it remained inhabited throughout this Seluf Kid, that's Greek related period, I would say from 312 to 63 BC, and the Parthian, 227 BC to 224, 224 AD periods, until it was finally abandoned before or after the Islamic conquest in the years of 600, 633 to 638. One of the most remarkable achievements of Mesopotamian architecture was the development of the ziggurat, a massive structure taking the form of a terrace step pyramid of successfully receding stories or levels with a shrine or temple at the summit. Like pyramids, ziggurats were built by stacking and piling. Ziggurats were not places of worship for general public, rather only priests or other authorized religious officials were allowed inside to tend to cult statues and make offerings. The first surviving ziggurats date to the Sumerian civil culture in the 4th millennium BC, but they continue to be popular architectural form in the late and early 2nd millennium BC as well. Ziggurats are of often referred to as pyramids, large stepped structures that were erected in ancient times from bricks in Mesopotamian and adjacent areas, according to their functional purpose. They are rather close to the Mesoamerican pyramids, since they were temple structures. Modern archaeologists and historians tend to this uh, version or hypothesis the ancient Sumerian texts also speak about this. So Gudeya, the ruler of the Sumerian city of Lagash, that was about 2142 to 2116 BC, received instructions for the construction of a ziggurat. As the, ta as the text on the tablet says, directly from the hands of the gods, he saw a man shining like the heavens standing next to a divine bird who commissioned him to build a temple. This man, who judging by the crown on his head, was a god, as it turned out was Ningirsu. Ningirsu. With him was a goddess who held the table of the favorite star in heaven, and in her other hand, was a sacred style with which she pointed out to Gudea her patronizing planet. In the hands of the third god was a, a table made of precious stone and the view of the temple was described there. Um, in accordance with the plan that he received, Gudea built the ziggurat temple. Unfortunately, time has not spared the ancient structures. All that remained of them were swollen shapeless hills. Archaeologists and restorers, as they can, restore those ziggurats. Well, they, they actually rebuild them, but the result look more like embodiment of their personal ideas than they reflect the reality. Strictly speaking, ziggurats are not pyramids at all. They have a complex shape very far not only from the Egyptian, but even the Mayan pyramids. If there is something of a pyramidical geometric shape in them, it is only the slight decrease in the transverse dimensions with height. Therefore, it would be more correct to call them pseudopyramids. And then, we shall leave the, py uh, the pseudopyramids behind and uh, we we're going to speak about the pseudo-humanoids. Reptilian looking humanoids. And I find it intriguing that the Russian space scientist and graduate of the Mozhaisky Military Space Academy that has produced the GRU spies, space intelligence experts, and top engineers, I find it interesting that he is interested in the artifacts of ancient Mesopotamia. And he says, the most intriguing secrets always come from the most ancient times. That's what Sergei stated. Around 5500 to 4000 BC, an ancient civilization existed on the territory where modern Iraq is now located. It is known as the Ubaid culture. This was the very first civilization of Mesopotamia, and it is this 
civilization um, that is believed to have laid the foundation of the civilization of the Sumerians. Among the ruins and various intriguing artifacts left by this once great culture, a very diverse assortment of obviously strange ancient figurines was found. They are unique in that they depict humanoids with reptilian heads. These creatures have both male and female characteristics. Often you can see the lining on their shoulders. They have hats or helmets, and they are presented in various poses, holding various objects, such, for example, as poles and scepters. And in the case of female figurines, they have breast-sucking babies, which also look like lizards, like their mothers. The figurines are unlike anything else found in that region. The depicted creatures have elongated heads, pointed muzzles, how, he's, uh, point, how Sergei puts it, and slanted, almost shaped eyes, almond-shaped eyes. These are clearly not people, not human beings, and they show mostly reptilian traits. What does science think about it? Initially, it was assumed that these were simply, simply sty stylized images of gods worshipped by ancient people, which in itself is not unusual, because there were many cultures on earth that worshipped snakes and reptilian deities, including the Sumerians themselves. However, later archaeologists and historians doubted this hypothesis. One of the reasons for the doubt is that, in fact, the figures do not have luxurious clothes, which might well be expected of them if they were omnipotent gods. Another reason is that the poses in which the creatures, including infants, are they're completely ordinary. They do not involve any ceremonies or religious rites. It seems that the ancient figurines are not part of a religious culture, but at the same time, they were very important to those who created them. Therefore, the question arises, if these creatures were not worshipped as gods, then why this 7,000-year-old civilization produce all these carefully crafted figures of human reptilian creatures at all? The answer to this question will largely depend on who you ask. One hypothesis claims that they were just decorative objects or abstract works of art, and the resemblance to humanoid reptiles is just a random or aesthetic design. And yet it is not clear why in this case to make so many figures with almost identical creature, uh, creatures, clothes, and objects. There is also the idea that the Ubaid culture may have practiced some kind of body modification, such, for example, as the elongation of the skull. Such facts have been noted in some other cultures of the world. And maybe the figurines are just images of these people? But if so, why did they do it? There is also an opinion that these finds represent some kind of a hoax and they were simply planted in the places of their finds. However, the analysis dates the figurines as really belonging to the Ubaid culture. Another hypothesis, it lies in the fact that the uh, figures, figurines can depict some real race of aliens, extraterrestrials, different beings than humans, which resemble reptiles in appearance. So maybe the Earth was really visited by a race of humanoid reptiles in ancient times, and we found images of ancient alien visitors. In fact, there is no way to find out why the Ubaid culture made such figurines. And we can only guess what these findings really mean. The Ubaid period, according to scientists, is a prehistoric period of Mesopotamia, the name derives from the Tel al-Ubaid, where the earliest large excavation of the Ubaid period material was conducted initially in 1919 by Henry Howe and later by Leonard Woolley. 
in South Mesopotamia, the period is the earliest known period on the alluvial plain, although it is likely earlier periods exist under the alluvial. You can only imagine what's down below. Maybe someday archaeologists will get a chance to go there. In the south, it has a very long duration between the about 6500 and 3800 BC. And then it was replaced by the Uruk period, and I already told you about the Uruk artifact. Well, in northern Mesopotamia, the period runs only between 5300 and 4300 BC. It is preceded by the Halaf period and the Halaf Ubayi transitional period, and succeeded by the late Chalcolithic period. The more archaeological excavations we do, I think we'll, the more we'll be finding interesting things. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you informed. And um, please, if you like my work, uh, please support me through the links you'll find in the description to this video and you'll find other videos about strange archaeological finds in Asia and other parts of the world. And uh, please like uh, my video, please subscribe to the channel and tell others. Thank you.